Hi, I'm Debbie, and welcome to Divine Destiny with Debbie. Today we're reading for October 7th, 8th, and 9th, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Now, if you're new to my channel, what you want to do is, I would hope you watch the introduction at least once, but this will be tagged on to all the videos in the beginning. If you want to go straight, or if you're a cross-watcher, and you want to go straight to the readings, then go right down there. There's a timestamp in, the in the description, and you can just bypass this. Watch, watch at least once, though, please. Anyway, you know that when I'm doing the weekend, I use my Radley Valentine Angel Tarot Cards, my John Holland Psychic Tarot and Oracle Cards. I will pull one also from my Doreen and Grant Virtue Angels of Abundance. That's fairly new. And, of course, my Emily Anderson Crystal Deck. Now, for this introduction, what we do is we look at the world, the universe at large, and I will be using my Weight Rider uh, Traditional Tarot and my Colette Baron Reed The Good Tarot. Now, I have prayed, meditated, and infused all the decks with Reiki energy. Just remember, though, this is a general reading. It may or may not resonate. Take what you like. Leave the rest. I'm an intuitive channeler. I open myself to higher power. Whatever the words are, I try not to get too much in the way of it, okay? So higher power to me is God, Source, Holy Spirit. But to you, it may be somebody or something different. That's okay. Anyway, so what's going on here on the 7th? Um, just to kind of just do what's going on in the world. Mercury, which is in Virgo, will be trining, which is a good position with Pluto that still is retrograde in Capricorn. However, Capricorn is going to be going direct, and so what's going to happen is it is stationary right now. So Mercury um, is the, you know, is the planet of fast actions, fast energies. There's a lot of... Um, mm, there's a lot of communications that comes with Mercury. Mercury likes to be in Virgo. That is a, um, you know, Earth planet. Capricorn is also an Earth planet. Uh, Pluto has been reconstructing our, our you know, it's, it's been in a reconstruction mood since uh, 2008 when it entered into Capricorn. So it is reconstructing a lot of things in the earthly realm. So the two of it, so you might hear some communication. We might hear something about what Pluto is doing. They're in a good position. You know, they're liking each other. So the news may not necessarily be so um, harsh as it might be something that's very welcoming. However, however, on the 8th of October, that's when Pluto starts to go direct. Again, it's a stationary direct. It's almost like Pluto is just sitting there right now. And it's just kind of playing in its Capricorn world. And it's kind of deciding how we're going to reconstruct. Because Pluto has destroyed, has destruct, has had a lot of destruction in the world of Capricorn. And now, because Pluto will be going into um, Aquarius soon enough, 2023, it goes back and forth a little bit into Aquarius. And that's going to be all about the reconstruction of our thoughts and how we look at things and how we think about things and how we learn. So that's all up here when it goes, when it starts doing that. Capricorn is with what we're doing with our hands, we're, what we're doing with our lives. It's very tangible reconstruction energy. So on the 8th, it's, it's going to go direct, but it's called stationary direct. So it's just kind of sitting there right now. On the 9th of October, we have a full moon in Aries. Now, this full moon will also be playing with some of the planets too. So the full moon will be in conjunction with Jupiter, which is retrograde in Aries. So that's a really positive source. It's a really positive energy for us. It is uh, sextile with Saturn and Mars. Saturn is retrograde in Aquarius. So sextiling isn't, it, it's just kind of a, you know, like a here or there. It's not necessarily really forceful, but it's not bad at all. In fact, it's kind of like a buddy that maybe you haven't seen for a while. However, the full moon in Aries will be squaring with Pluto in Capricorn. So that's where Aries is going to try to get um, Pluto to make some moves. It's kind of like, you know, it's kind of like telling Pluto, hey, you know what, we're done with a lot of this garbage. 
start doing the reconstruction part on the physicality part. So it's going to be, but we don't know how Pluto is going to react to that. We don't know how Pluto is going to be. Is Pluto going to go along with that Aries uh, energy? You know, remember we had the new moon in Libra, which is all about balance. And then we have this fiery um, Aries moon. And remember it is, even though it's, you know, sextile isn't necessarily a strong partnership, it is still a partnership with Sat, with, um, with, with, blah, 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 with Jupiter also in Aries too. So Aries wants good stuff. Aries wants stuff to start changing for the positive, And it's trying to push Pluto a little bit more into um, making some better changes. Okay, better choices. Pluto, it's time for you to make some better choices. So the full moon will be in Aries uh, you know, in October 9th. That will be at 4 54 p.m. Central Time, I'm sorry, Eastern Time. And then our, um, it was interesting, Pluto goes direct at 5.55 p.m. Eastern Time also. So there are some fives. So that could be some change, change, change. Either way, these are some strong energies and it could either be something very positive or it might be something that's just not darn too pretty. Okay. Anyway, let's see what we've got going now. Let's go on and um, see what we have with the Weight Rider Tarot. What do we have to the, from our higher power for this weekend, and especially with the full moon? And regardless of what the full moon is, you know, and regardless of the um, energies that try to square it or oppose it or try to rough it up a little bit, it is a, still a great time to release, relinquish, and request. And the more we put out the positive energy, the more that gets picked up also. So, you know, like I said, release what's, um, or I've said in the past, release what's no longer needed, um, relink, or no, release what's holding you back, rel relinquish what's no longer needed, and request the good stuff. Because good stuff is it's okay to ask for, okay? We've, we've been kind of conditioned not to expect miracles, and to me, miracles happen all the time, so... Let's see what we've got here. Remember, anything reversed has stronger energies. For me, let's see what we've got. Ah, so now we have a three of cups. So the number, and it was reversed. Now this is a celebratory energy. This is something like good things are happening. Things are moving. It's an emotional energy here too, because cups is our Aquarius. I'm sorry, it is our um Pisces, it, it, uh, it is our Cancer, it's also our Scorpio energy. We're about to turn into Scorpio. You know, Scorpio is the next season. Neptune is still um, retro in Pisces, so it's going deep and looking into our subconscious. What is it that we've been wanting? But this is, again, so this is Cups, this is Three. Three has celebratory energy, creative energy, and it's the power of Three. So power of Three energy is not a bad thing to do, especially around the full moon. So get a couple of buddies, get a couple of friends, and really put out the positive energy. And you can you can do with the full moon, three days before, three days after, all of that does have an effect. But this is celebration. This has things coming to a better positioning. I know sometimes, you know, the universe doesn't necessarily feel like it's, um, you know, has a lot to celebrate about, but something is going on, something emotionally, something spiritually is going on. There's an, a spiritual, um, maybe a spiritual celebration about to occur. Here we go. Next card is, now we have a 10. So 10 is a transitional number. We have a one, new beginning. A zero is God's source energy. But transition means we're moving on. We're moving. We're making some changes here. And the Wheel of Fortune, is. this is a major arcana. So this is a very high universal card. And this is kind of saying there's been a lot of spiritual energy, spiritual, um, you know, that from that zero to nine, there's been a lot of spiritual energy. Um, making makeovers, spiritual ascensions, and now we're transitioning. Now that we're transitioning, you know, if you think about what comes after transition, we have the, we have 11, which is justice. We have the 13, which is death. We have, you know, the devil. We have a little bit more to go through, but on the other side of all that becomes the star, becomes the sun, becomes the world. So there is a lot of positive. It's just keep going. We just have some more to go through, but the, on the on the flip side, 
there is much better energies waiting us. Here we go. Next card is, now this is again reversed. This is our rods. Rods are our fire sign. So there's Aries, full moon, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, passionate, burning, determined energy, very consuming energy. So it takes the spirituality of the uh, cup energy and it just makes it flame. It just makes it go after what you want. Now twos are partnerships, decisions, crossroads. It could be, you know, it could just be something that we have some choices about. The two of rods is a positive decision, it is a decision that, you know, it's like, you know, here he is, he's got his two, he's got his hand on one, so it does look like there a decision has been made, but he has the world awaiting him also. So this is a positive decision, this is a positive movement, but we also have this. So even though he has his hand on this, it doesn't necessarily mean that he is totally in, on board or totally, you know, with this decision. He could change his mind, but it is something where you really step up. The two of rods is stepping up, and it's just, I do feel like there's a decision that's been made, okay? So now, two car, the two other energies we haven't talked about is our air energy or our sword energy. That is Aquarius, Gemini, Libra. We are in Libra season. Um, lots of stuff going on with Gemini. Mars is in Gemini right now. It is direct for the moment, and we have Saturn, which is direct for the moment it will be you know switching over to, i'm sorry it's re, it's retro it will be going direct pretty soon anyway an aquarius is our thought processes our making plans our thinking things through also it could be about messages received and then we have our pentacles or our earth energy and that is our capricorn our taurus and our virgo energy and all of them what mercury in virgo um, Uranus in uh, is retrograde in Taurus. It's been there for, what, since 2018, I think it was. I think we talked about that. Um, it'll be there till 2024. Uh, and then, of course, we have the good old Pluto, which is just sitting there right now in Capricorn. So let's see what we have. One card here. So here we go. Okay, hey, we have the Queen of Water. Now, all the court cards have two dual energy. So one is the underlying energy. So such as the Queen, the Queen's underlying energy is water or cups. Okay, emotional. It's fluid. Um, this is also water energy. So pages page would have the underlying energy would be pentacle, earth energy. It is, um, you know, it is... Want, you know, Paige is very adventurous and wants to start on new, new, new beginnings. Knight's um, underlying energy is fire energy, or you know, so it would be the rods energy. And their, you know, underlying energy, you know, while the page wants to start, the knight is like, okay, let's go get them. The water energy is emotional, caring. It's very spiritual energy. And then, of course, the king has the air energy. So this is water, water. This is cups cups very emotional time so this would be a time that just really um you're, you're going to really want to watch you're going to want to watch your emotional um energies okay i have spoken about energies as almost like a currency so you really want to make sure you're not spending it foolishly you're not spending it on something that's not going to give you a really good return so i am i know that we don't have any earth energy in here it's water water you know so the queen though is very caring is very loving i'm just kind of feeling like the queen is just you know just doesn't necessarily feel the um she doesn't feel I, i'm kind of feeling like this queen is is borderline with hope okay she's just wanting and she's hoping and she's wishing at the same time she's feeling things extremely deeply so something's going on with her but you know but she's also royalty she's also you know steps up she also um puts her you know even though her feelings are right out there and just right for everyone to see right now she does know her her job she does know her duty so 
Something with this emotional energy, very fluid energy, spiritual energy. So this is, you know, and again, I kind of feel this thing with between her vacillating a little bit between a loss of hope and yet hoping for miracles. Okay, so something about her is interesting, especially since we have celebration, we have wonderful choices, we have this. But even though, even though things are moving forward, like I said, there's going to be some weird, it's still weird times. We still have that because we live in a, we live in a weird universe right now. So the queen, I'm just feeling like the queen is kind of between a loss of hope and hoping for a miracle. I just feel like she's just a little bit in between there. So let me know what you're thinking about this. How did you read this? Because many of you do, so I really appreciate that. Take a moment, please, please, because this helps. This does help to like, share, subscribe, click on the bell for notifications. Keep me going, and I appreciate you doing that. Also comment. I do love hearing from you. So why don't we start our readings now? <music> 